All right, this is Ryan with Better Tattooing. We're just gonna keep this model up and do a couple rock and roll. Today we're gonna be talking about why my ink stops flowing when I'm doing a tattoo. Rock and roll. <laughs> All right, now that's over. It's still really hot out here. You have to apologize. I'll have to apologize for my lack of energy today. I'm just, it's so hot. I, uh, I'm not accustomed to this amount of heat, <laughs> especially in this, this garage with no ventilation. It's so hot. Anyways, we don't need to hear you complaining, Ryan. We just want to learn stuff. Okay. So let's say you're doing a tattoo. You're an hour, hour and a half in and you're just getting this inconsistent spattering of pigment coming out. You're getting lines with massive holidays, right? When they're just picking up and dropping like this, or maybe you're seeing a line that you're running and it looks all sketchy, right? Instead of being like solid, and it comes back out. There's a few reasons why this happens. We're just gonna talk about one of them right now. The first one is gonna be your tube is dirty or it's pitted. What do we mean by that? previous video we're talking about uh, ink flow where we can use you know direction I didn't even say anything about band tension we'll make another video about that but different different things to actually try and you know control how fast the ink is coming out of it well let's say everything has just been going good you know I'm doing a great tattoo just a little ways into it, it just kind of goes bad well there's a reason why the first one we'll cover is is pitting right pitting doink doink Pitting is going to occur because the fluids that we're using in tattooing, the pigments, right? The pigments are not just a smooth oil or whatever, right? They may have glycerin in them, which is still mildly corrosive, but there's little particles of pigment, right? And when they're flowing out of the tube, the needle is pressing back against it and it's rubbing it against that tube. We blow it up, these particles of pigment, right, that are rubbing up against the tube are kind of like sandpaper. So what happens is the wall of the tube, which we might as well do this right now, that is X thick, and I don't know what the actual measurements are because I don't really care. It ends up getting rubbed down in spots, right? So you'll actually see things start to get thinner in certain areas. This usually happens around hour two to four anyways, with most stuff if you keep your needle clean, but you're gonna see it do it, like just get thinner. When it gets thinner, what we're gonna have happen is inconsistencies are gonna to start to occur along that, that hydraulic motion that's created with the needle rubbing against the back of the tube, right? And if we have pockets where stuff is gonna become stuck, it's gonna disturb that flowability. We're gonna get a pause where the ink is actually gonna look like, where's my green at? Oh, here it is, it's on the back of that. Where it's gonna look like it actually backs up, right? And it's gonna create almost like a false wall dam which in turn is gonna cause a moment where there has to become a space for this stuff to basically fall down into before more pigment can start to flow again, leaving you with small gaps where you're gonna get a drop, maybe a bit more of pigment, the small all the drops, where it's just not flowing straight. Simple, the pitting is one of the easiest things to try and deal with when you're dealing with spotty lines. All you need to do realistically, clean your tube, if you're using a coil, it's, it's some of the easiest ones. If it's around, take your tube out. I'll do this, I'll just write it down. And you get to rotate your tube just a little bit. Rotate, right? You're gonna take your tube out and just turn it a little bit. Tighten it back up and just keep going. What you're gonna do is start to move those spots that are pitted that are sitting against the back of the tube and you're gonna move them around away from where you're working, which is gonna help that flowability. Usually what we're gonna try to do is you can do it like three times in essence, right? We want to go at about a 90 degree rotation off of this stuff because we don't want it being close enough to the pigment wall, right? Where the actual flowability is going to be uh, constricted again and just in another spot. We want to move it out of the way. So if it's up here versus down by where that pigment may actually still be hitting it and causing, you know, a bit of a drag on it, it's not going to occur. It's simple. Just rotate it, right? If you're using a rotary with those cartridge type tips, I hate to say it, you're gonna have to change your tip. Just what happens, right? You're gonna notice this occur with certain colors more than others, especially ones that are mixed with TiO2, uh, it's titanium dioxide, you know, if they've got barium sulfate, if they've got zinc oxide. If you see 
TiO2, uh, zinc oxide. I don't know what barium sulfate is. It's just like BAS. I don't know. Um, it's so hot out here. I can't think of chemistry right now. If you see any of these additives inside of it, they're so much so dense and they're so rough, you know, that mineral base of them, they're going to wear the plastic away really quickly. We won't even talk about the potential health consequences of having plastic injected into your body or metal if you're using metal tips. That's for another video. But that's the, uh, that's, that's the long and the short of it there. The old skinny pitting can cause issues. Well, let's get down to the other reason why this happens. I, I don't know why I've got such OCD today with this stuff, but I've just really got to fix this. <laughs> doot, doot. Um, next thing that's going to happen is shit's dirty. You're in the zone, doing great, loving life, just slaying a tattoo. You haven't properly rinsed your, your needle in a while. That means the tube tip has just gotten dirty. Instead of just having a nice smooth flow here, you've got chunks of pigment or something, different colors all kind of mixed in. They're all smushed all over, you know? And what's happening is, is it's restricting not only the movement of the needle from going back and forth, but it's really restricting the flow of pigment. If we're gonna look at it in kind of like a straightforward way, we want the pigment to flow down, right? If we're thinking about this as the top, and this is the outing, like the out of the needle, right? We want it to flow straight. When you have a whole bunch of junk in there, it, the pigment may have to take a really strangled route to get there because there's all this extra clumps of whatever stuff collected along the inside of the tube. Think about a hose versus a creek or a river, right? They have to move over all that stuff. It can slow down the actual force of that stuff moving. Easiest way to get rid of this and fix it is to clean your tube. Right? So if we got it dirty, let's just stick with this because I don't want to be so crazy today, but dirty, you got to clean it. Right? Simple enough. Take your cup that you've got water in and you want to add just about 5% soap, whatever soap you use. I use green soap. If the person doesn't have an allergy to it, right? I'll put my water in there, add a little bit of soap, get some bubbles up on top, dip it in there, give it a rinse, clean it off. Good to go. It's awesome. Works great. So there is also one more way that you can actually have your stuff that's just not going to be flowing very well. And it's the same thing with dirty, but what we're going to see is hair or paper towels. Paper towel pickup. This is when I see a lot. And what happens is as you're going, maybe you haven't cleaned off the hair very well, or maybe you didn't really like clean the skin before you got into it, or maybe you're just really aggressive with how you try to clean your tubes once you give them a rinse, right? What you're gonna get is products like bits of paper towel, which, I mean, lint-free paper towels are really expensive, but they're usually some of the best ones to use actually in tattooing because they make your needles last a little bit longer because of this. Uh, or maybe just the hair is like, you hadn't fully cleaned it off, maybe you hadn't shaved it enough, or maybe they have very dry skin that is just kind of like shedding at high rates while you're working, as it ends up getting picked up and stuck in the needles. Let's just erase this from that other thing there, right? Boop. And what happens is, if it gets all clumped up in there and it actually starts to hold it up, not only does it disrupt the ink flow coming down because it starts getting really gunky on the outside of those needles, but it also forces the needles apart. So instead of having nice straight needles where everything is just going groovy, you might get needles that boop, 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 start fanning out, maybe even crisscrossing, right? So when they're hitting the skin, one, they're not hitting consistent where you ex expect everything just to go in a nice even order. Instead, they're hitting all wonky because there's stuff stuck in them. So how do you fix this? You can try a rinse. On average, you should be able to get it out. If you have a paper towel pickup from, from wiping too aggressively, you, you got to change your needle. You're not going to be able to pull everything out of there. And you don't want to be sitting there fingering the needles because you're going to have, one, increased chances of getting stuck. And if somebody has hepatitis, that's not good, or any other disease, or you end up possibly getting it. Um, and then two, I mean, you're never going to be able to pull all of it out. It's already got some type of lint or other stuff or even like some you know, skin stuck in there. And it, it'll just keep collecting it as you go. It's just what's going to happen. Easiest way is just change it out. Right? If you give it a rinse and it happens one more time, just change it. Change the needle. And that's it. 
those three things, you should be good. If you can't get it with this, there's something else that might be wrong. But we're not going to get into that right now. Right? Rock and roll. Anyways, let us know if you like it. Subscribe, do all that stuff. Listen to the podcast. I think we got a link in the uh, description. And send us your questions if you have any. It's bettertattooing at gmail.com. Anyways, this is Ryan from Better Tattooing. Signing off. Thank you.